everyone. Today we're going to be talking about accuracy, reliability, and validity. Okay, so first, when we think about accuracy, we think about data. So we have our data procedures that are written in a clear and concise way. We want to make sure our operational definitions are clear and have a discrete beginning and end. If our data is accurate, that means that whatever we're marking down is a representation of what's actually occurring. So talking about accuracy, we want to think of the word true value. This term is going to remind you that when something is accurate, it means that the true value exists in the data. So if we're trying to see what tools or which measures are accurate, we can compare them to the true value. So one way to do this in a real life example is to video record sessions with your clients to then go back and check your accuracy for your data collection. So if you have a kid that exhibits, exhibited 10 head hits in an hour period, you may go back and watch the video to try and recount the 10 head hits to see if that in fact matched the true value. If you go back and you count, and it's 11 or nine, then there's a discrepancy and that yields inaccuracy. Another real life example would be a scale when checking weight. If you go to the doctor scale, usually those are pretty precise and you have the, the weight of 210. Then you go home and you have a weight of 205. There's a discrepancy there. We are, we're not sure which measure is off, but we know that one of the scales is inaccurate. Another way to test the accuracy is to use IOA data. So inter-observer agreement is a way to compare data between two or more therapists to see how accurate the results are. Next, we're going to talk about reliability. When you hear the word reliability, you need to think of repeatability. Are the procedures written in a way that can be repeated to other therapists, caregivers, or in the future by other people. It's important to note that you may have data that has repeatability, but not accuracy. Take the doctor scale example. If we went to the doctor again and again, and it was consistently five pounds over the scale at home, this still would be reliable, although it's not accurate. We want to make sure that we are writing our procedures in a clear and concise way. Also that we are writing step-by-step -step instructions that can be easily followed in the future. Validity is next. For this term, you want to think and ask yourself, are we measuring what we are intending to measure? This can be difficult in ABA. We want to use the data collection procedure that will best represent our data. So for behaviors that are clear and concise, have a discrete beginning and end to where we can use something like frequency or just track the number of times it's happening. This can work in a lot of cases, but we have to be careful if we over represent or under represent what's actually happening. Something can be accurate and reliable, but not valid. It is important to note that something can be valid and accurate, but not reliable. For example, if we want to measure attention and we say, okay, well, let's look at their test scores to see if they're attending in class, because if they uh, did well in their math test, they must have good attention, right? Wrong, this is not a valid measure of attention skills. We have to consider this when we want to measure a specific skill to be sure that their data represents the best valid measure. So that's just a brief introduction to these terms. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and also follow us on Instagram for more visuals.